So one of my viewers have asked me whether he can upgrade his memory. So I'm going to make a video about how you could upgrade your memory and what are the compatible memories and what's the best memory you could get for your motherboard. The first step is to go to this website called PC Part Picker and then we need to click on System Builder. Here, the first step is to choose a motherboard. So we select here and in the search bar, type the name of your motherboard. I will use Gigabyte GAH61M-S1 as an example. So if I select this, it shows the picture of my motherboard. So you can see here, we got two slots for memory or RAM. And you can see they will be located in here. If I close this and if I scroll down here, you can see the specification of your motherboard. Things to note for upgrading your memory is memory maximum size, which is 16 GB for this example. And then memory type is really important. So for example, you can't insert a memory type of DDR4 into a DDR3. Your memory needs to be DDR3 if that says on your motherboard specification and it gives you the number of slots that we have and then we have the speeds that it accepts. The maximum speed it accepts, it says 1333. So what I'll do, I'll use the snipping tool and I just make sure I got a snippet of this and keep it aside for now and then what you need to do here is now to click on add. So we got our motherboard selected, now we need to select the memory. So click on choose memory. And as soon as you do that, it shows you all the compatible memories that you can fit on your motherboard. So how to choose the best memory? There is a lot of memories in here. First thing I would do is I would click on modules and then again on modules and then it would arrange it according to their size or capacity. So the maximum size, if you remember, we could have is 16 GB and says that if you will go with Corsair, you could have two 8 GB memory and it will fit. Other things to look for other than the capacity or size is frequency. Frequency or speed is the maximum bandwidth or data that can be transferred at a given time. That means the higher the frequency or speed, the better the memory. Then we have CAS or column access strobe. It is the number of clock cycles that pass between when an instruction is given and when the information is made available. So the lower the CAS latency, the better the memory. Using both the speed and CAS, we can get the true latency of the memory. To get the true latency in nanoseconds, use the formula CAS latency divided by RAM clock speed times 2000. For example, if we take the first one in the list, we have a CAS of 9, divide that by the speed of 1600 and times that by 2000 and we should get a true latency which in here it is called first world latency of 11.25 nanoseconds. So what does that mean? It means to get the best memory for your motherboard first you need to make sure you have selected the maximum size your motherboard can take which is 2 times 8 GB in this case and then instead of looking at the speed and CAS latency all you need to do is to look at this column which says first world latency which is determined by using the speed and CS. So the lower the latency, the better the memory. In another word, the lower the latency, the faster the data would be transferred from the memory to the CPU or other parts of your motherboard. All of them have 2 times 8 GB but now you need to just look at the lowest world latency and in this case for example the Kingston has 10.718 nanoseconds which means it is better than Corsair. So if I scroll down a bit more we can even find a bit lower 9.167 nanoseconds so that means this is better than the other two. So how come this is better? You can see the CAS latency is higher 
but its speed is higher as well. When you divide them, you get overall a faster latency. That's why this is better. So now going back to the snapshot I took of the motherboard's capacity. And one thing that I noticed from this website is the memory speed here is given that it can only be 800, 1066 or 1333. But if you look at this list, it gives you more than 1333. So if I would, for example, select 1600, it might fit and it might work, but your motherboard doesn't like it. That means you should not go with 1600, even though it shows you in the list. So to narrow down our options, what we need to do, if you want to go with the best, we select a module of two times eight GB first. Remember, this is for this example. And then if you select speed, you can see now it has arranged it based on the lowest possible, which is 133, which would fit our motherboard. So we got the highest speed that our motherboard accepts. So if you scroll down, all of the ones with 133 have the same true latency for this example. So then you have to select one of these two companies or there are more companies that you can select. I will select this one, G Skill. It has got a better reviews. <clears throat> again, just double check that it is DDR3. Bring the snapshot back again. So maximum size 16 GB. Yes, we got two slots, two times 8 GB. That's good. It is DDR3, that's good. And the maximum memory speed that we can have is 1333. And that's what we have here. This is a picture of the memory and you can again look in more detail about its specification. And then all you need to do is to click on add and then you can see that there is no compatibility issues found. That means these two are compatible and this is the best memory you could get for this motherboard. I would also recommend you to go to Google and type in the name of your motherboard and find its specification just to double check. And then when you come to this page, you can just click on specification. This is for gigabyte. Obviously your motherboard might be different. And then in the RAM, you can see again, it says DDR3. Another thing that it says, it supports non-ECC memory modules. ECC means error correction code, which is used for computers such as servers and workstations where the RAM could automatically detect and correct memory errors. And ECC has an extra chip than a normal memory. However, the slots for ECC and non-ECC is the same. So you have to check whether your motherboard supports ECC or not. As in this case, this doesn't support ECC. So if you go back to the memory that we just selected, and if you scroll down to the specifications, here is a column which says ECC and it is a non-ECC memory, which is a good news because our motherboard is also a non-ECC. So both of them are compatible. Now, if I go to my own motherboard, which is Dell Precision T3500, and if I click on the specification, another thing that you can notice here is that my motherboard supports ECC and non-ECC. That's a good news. It is DDR3. Okay, that's important. Because I got six slots in this motherboard, it makes it a bit more complicated. For example, it doesn't allow you to have four 4 GB memory. You can have three or you can have six. It doesn't allow you to have any configuration that you want to have. That's why I brought you in this example to show you that you need to check your computer's specification to see what memory configuration actually your motherboard supports. Also, I could not have three 4 GBs and three 2 GBs. That won't work. I hope this video was useful. If it was, please don't forget to watch my other videos on my left and to subscribe to support my channel. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye.